Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is gonna be a full face Friday, but this is gonna be a little bit different. We're not doing a one brand tutorial, but we're doing a full face of makeup brands that have kicked me off of PR. So I know that that concept sounds like it could be super dramatic or negative, but that's not what we're going for here. I have no hard feelings against any of these brands and we'll get into all of them and why I think I got kicked off the PR list, but I thought it could be like a fun video to do. And if you guys like it, definitely let me know. So so first up, I am going to prime my skin and get it ready for makeup. I'm going to do my eyeshadow first, but I want my primer to really sit on my skin and help hydrate because I'm very dehydrated right now. And first up from a brand that has kicked me off PR is Smashbox. And Smashbox has this primer oil that is one of my all-time favorite primers when my skin is feeling as dehydrated as it is right now. I think I've just been using very stripping facial washes and I need to put that hydration back into my skin. Now when it comes to the actual brand and like them kicking me off, I really don't know why. I think I maybe just didn't share enough of their products, but it's kind of a no hard feelings thing because I don't use a ton of Smashbox products. They're kind of like slipping into the background of my mind when it comes to makeup anyways. So definitely no hard feelings there, but I'm going to pump a little bit of this oil onto a duo fiber brush. I am jittery right now because I just drank almost a whole large latte from Duncan. So this is going everywhere and I am gonna look a little oily. It's for people who wanna look super dewy. I always recommend this primer. So I'm gonna use the CoverGirl concealer to conceal my eyelids today. I'm also gonna be using this underneath my eyes and like as concealer on my face. Uh, CoverGirl, I think I just haven't received anything in probably a year, so I'm just assuming. There's no real reason for it. Like, I know a lot of people think that so many influencers get kicked off PR because they talked negatively about something or whatever, which I'm sure, like, I'm sure I have at some point, but I don't know why they kicked me off. So anyways, this concealer is the True Blend Undercover Concealer in the shade Classic Ivory, and I really do enjoy this drugstore concealer. I'm just gonna be popping it on the lid to kind of conceal some discoloration before eyeshadow. You guys will have to let me know if you're interested in any tips or tricks for creators or people who want to become YouTubers or anything like that because I'm kind of thinking about um, branching out. I'm always branching out with my content, but I'm thinking about starting to maybe give advice to other people um, who might be interested in making a career out of social media because even though I don't have everything figured out for myself, I do feel like I have a lot of resources and a lot of knowledge and I'd be happy to start sharing my tips and tricks and I do feel like I've been very blessed and very lucky in this industry but also there's a lot of hard work that goes behind the scenes into getting PR and working with brands and everything like that. So if you'd wanna see my insight, then just let me know that you would watch that kind of video and I'd be happy to start working on that. Okay, so my concealer is down as my eyeshadow base. And I don't know if my eyeshadow today is gonna to be super interesting to you guys because I am a pretty much an eyeshadow reviewer. Like I review mostly eyeshadow palettes when it comes to makeup. So again, a lot of the palettes in my collection, I'm very blessed to still be on PR. There are some that I'm not. So I chose one that I don't think I've ever talked about on my channel. If I have, it's been very rare instances. So I think that's probably why they don't send me products anymore because I don't really think I ever talked about them. And with PR, brands expect you to talk about the products, but you're not required to talk about the products. If you are an influencer or creator, I highly recommend that you suggest to the brand that you will post a about them if you love their products or if you are wanting to do a review or whatever like on your own terms don't ever let someone tell you that you have to do something if you're not being compensated that's just a little bit of advice but this is the balm is the brand and this is the nude dude volume 2 palette I don't think I've ever used this so I have nostalgic memories of these palettes because my best friend and I would go into Kohl's and we would look at these palettes and it was one of like the early palettes palettes that we were drooling over before we really got into makeup. 
um, was the nude dude palette. So it's so funny that it's a bunch of like naked men with nude eyeshadows covering them. We are going to dip into the first man's torso, which is Fearless. And this is hopefully gonna be a little bit of a transition shade. It does look like it has a little shimmer to it. And first thing I'm noticing is that there's a lot of pickup. Every time I blow on my shadow, and like it goes into the abyss of my room, I think about like the next time I have to clean this floor and it just makes me sad. So this is a random Morphe brush. I'm just going to blend this around. I'm actually gonna be doing my brows close to last today because we have that oil down and it might move around my brow product if I do my brows before my foundation. So I'm like tempted to go into the really deep shades, but I'm gonna try to transition my way there. So we're gonna go into a feisty, which is kind of like a taupey color. And this is gonna go into the outer corner. So while I'm blending this shade, let me give you a quick dumbass story for you guys to just laugh at me. So I wanted to re caulk the shower. My boyfriend and I use the downstairs shower in this house and it's like pretty gross. Like I don't show my bathroom because it's like not cute. And so we have this super, super old shower and it needed new caulk. Anyways, I saw like a TikTok of removing caulk. So we got that tool to remove it and we removed it. It was super satisfying, whatever. So we bought new stuff and in order to lay it down, you have to make sure the surface is clean and dry. So I cleaned the entire shower with bleach, like a bleach based cleaner. And then my dumbass, I, I still can't believe I did it. Um, I wanted to make sure everything was dry so that the caulk would stick and there was no like water or anything messing up the caulk. So I went ahead and sprayed the entire shower with isopropyl or rubbing alcohol. And guess what, you guys? I'm dumb, I'm dumb. If you know, you know, but if you mix bleach and rubbing alcohol, you create a gas called chloroform. <laughs> and if you guys don't know what chloroform is, it's the gas that like serial killers use to knock out their victims. And it can literally kill you. It can seep into your skin. Um, it can, obviously it turns into a gas and it can make you pass out. It can like give you organ damage. So yeah, uh, I created like probably a minimal amount of it just from like the puddle that was in the bathtub. I doubt it was enough to like actually do anything to me, but I felt so disgusting after cleaning the shower. I felt like I was going to faint. And I couldn't figure out why. I was like, oh my God, like, do I have like COVID? Like, what is this? And then I Googled it and just something was telling me to Google it. And I was like, oh my God, okay. And I Googled it and I created chloroform on accident. And there you go. That was my day. So I'm thankful to be alive. And I learned a nice little lesson about mixing cleaning products. And believe me, there are many more ways that you can completely screw up like that. So just be careful. Okay, so we're gonna dip into the color I've been wanting to dip into, which looks like it's like almost black, but like kind of purpley. It's called Friendly. I don't have like the talent or the time right now to like do an actual smoky wing, but it's going along the lash line first, kind of just blending it. I'm gonna clean it up with my face makeup later. So I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm just kind of like going out from the middle of the eyelid out into the wing area and then blending it up. So it's like, it's giving like a crescent over here. So yeah, I mean, I'm liking this palette. There's nothing that I don't like about it. It's blending pretty good and it's a nice little neutral palette. Love the vibes, love that it's like naked men. That's so funny. So next up, I'm honestly not 100% sure if I was ever like really on a consistent PR list for this brand, but I don't think I am right now anyways. It's been probably, 
I don't even know, probably a year since I've received anything from NYX. And I did purchase this on my own. This is a pigment. My favorite pigment from NYX is Vegas Baby, and I would go into that, but I kind of want to try something different today. This is called Diamond. I picked it up recently, but I have not tried it yet. So this is going to go over that blank space on my lid. I kind of like the vibes that we have here. It's a little bit like old fashioned and cool looking, so I don't want to mess it up too much. So just tapping a pigment over that empty spot instead of like a dramatic eyeshadow is kind of where my head is at. Zooming you guys in for this fun part, I'm just picking up some of the pigment with the Morphe brush from earlier and going into the blank space but also overlapping the dark shade. Sometimes these do blow away throughout the day so I just want to make sure that I've got it on there. I feel like I don't want liner with the white space that I have on my lid. I kind of like the vibe, like my eyes look really open. So I'm gonna skip this, but all of my eye products, my mascara and my lashes and this liner are from Morphe. I think I have been kicked off the Morphe PR list. Uh, I haven't received anything since I think this mascara. So this is their new mascara. I'm just gonna pop this on. I actually haven't tried it yet. If I did, I only tried it once. It's very liquidy. It's got like kind of a clumpy brush, uh, but I do like the packaging. Mascara is so personal. People love them or they hate them. It's hard to find people who consistently agree on their mascara taste. So I wanna know down below, what is the worst mascara that you have ever tried? Let me know in the comments. So interesting. Um, I love hearing the answers because it's crazy because people love what people hate. People hate what people love and it's just so funny. I also have Morphe lashes today and these have been sitting in the back of my drawer because this style is so not me. Cross our fingers that this does not make my look look ridiculous and that they go on okay. I'm gonna have to trim them, I'm gonna have to work with them, but this is the style secretive. I don't think that they sell these anymore. So we're just gonna do it, get these out of my collection. <laughs> All right, so I had to trim the shit out of these and what I have to say first is that they're so shiny that they're gonna look very, very fake on me. And also the band is like a little tricky. So I don't know, let's just, let's just put them on. <laughs> I mean, they're intense, but they're kind of cute, right? I kind of think they're cute. I did have to kind of manipulate them a little to get it, them to be round. I mean, they seem kind of on. Hopefully they don't give me too much trouble. I'm gonna see if I have one of those lash things that can like mush them with my real lashes. So this next product is foundation and this brand, I don't really think I've ever consistently been on their PR list. They've sent me products before, but they don't send me consistent products and they haven't sent me products in a really long time. And this is Tarte. So I love Tarte. I did a full face of Tarte Cosmetics. That's one of my favorite full face videos that I've done to date. I highly suggest checking that video out because it's one of my favorite makeup looks that I've done. But this foundation is my favorite from Tarte. It's very full coverage. So this is like the enemy of my happy skin day but this is the Amazonian clay full coverage foundation in the shade fair light neutral so I'm gonna grab a foundation brush this is the morphe m439 we're just gonna slap some of this on maybe not too too much because I am like having kind of a good skin day and we're going to get started on the face and when it comes to tart again there there are no hard feelings here but I kind of feel like they don't like me <laughs> Maybe I'm paranoid, but I just kind of feel like the people buying the brand just don't like me. So um, maybe I just don't fit their vibe. I like their makeup. Some of their palettes are my favorite palettes and this foundation is great. Um, so yeah. So concealer, same concealer that I use to conceal my eyelids, the CoverGirl True Blend. I'm just going to do like a couple dots, um, trying to direct the light to the high points. This is a really nice full coverage concealer at the drugstore. I also will take myself off of a PR list if I feel like it is getting overwhelming or products are being sent to me that I know I won't use. I also will remove myself from a PR list if they email me too many times asking for content. Um, 
I post on my own time, on my own terms, and sometimes it does take me a little longer to get to something. So if I feel a brand is borderline harassing me in my email, I will ask them to stop sending me product. And there's this one specific brand that just won't stop. Like they won't stop. They finally stopped emailing me, but I literally was like, take me off the list, please. Um, and they, they didn't. It was a skincare brand, so we don't have to get into it, but they basically were like, where's your post? Where's your post? Where's your post? And I was like, I'm not posting and you're making me not want to post. So please take me off. And they've never stopped. All right. So let's powder. We have another drugstore brand and this is Maybelline. I, I'm sad about Maybelline. I will say that because I liked being on there. PR, but it was like years ago. I probably 2017 and then I just lost contact with whoever I was working with and we broke up. My technique is to completely avoid my under eyes because they need hydration. And so I let them do what they're going to do. If they're going to crease, they're going to crease. But for me, they're going to crease more if I powder them. So I just let them be. Also, if you're a creator, then you're probably going to vibe with what I'm about to say. But like, do any of you like kind of look for approval from your parents because you're doing like a non-traditional job and like you like being on certain brands PR like Maybelline because you can tell your mom like, oh, I got a Maybelline package and they'll be like, wow, like Maybelline. Like, So that one hurt. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go back into that friendly shade with a little fluffy eyeshadow brush and we're gonna finish up the under eye. Just a tiny, tiny bit. I just don't want it to be completely naked under there, but I also don't want it to be too intense. Just connecting the eye look ever so slightly. And I do actually like the purple hue that's in this color. Like it's kind of like a blacky purple and it brings out my eye color. So I'm happy with that look. I feel like this eye look is incomplete without doing my brows. So I'm going to do my brows. And for brows, I have the MAC Eyebrow Styler Crayon. This is in the shade Stud. And as far as I know, I've been kicked off PR for MAC. Nobody ever like really informs you that you are not on PR anymore. And you might like be put back on. I have no idea. But PR for me is pretty sporadic. Like I don't think I'm on it. But if they have like a big collection in the future, maybe I'll get it. Like maybe I'm on the bottom of the list. So I'm adding thickness and filling them in a little. This is a pretty nice pencil. I, it's like very nice and dainty, which I like for that nice sharp line under the brow. So another one that hurt is Jouer. I have not received anything from Jouer since their blush palette, which again, I think it was over a year ago. This one hurt me a little because I promote them a lot. Maybe they were cleaning up their list. Maybe I just didn't fit their vibe anymore. Maybe they forgot about me, who knows? <laughs> so I have the Jouer Light Medium Duo. This is the bronzer duo, one of my all time favorite bronzers. And I'm gonna use the AOA Studio Brush. This is from that shop, this a $1 shop and I like to mix these together so I go between both bronzer powders and I like to bronze tour so almost like I'm contouring almost like I'm bronzing and that's just how I like to apply this particular bronzer I feel like you really can't get mad at getting you know taken off of a PR list because you're never entitled to being on it. You just aren't owed anything from these brands. So I don't ever really take it personally. I guess the only way I could say that I take it personally if I get removed from a list is if like I like eat, sleep, live, breathe by a brand. Then I'm like, ouch, you know? But for me personally, I understand if maybe I don't post enough or something for a brand's liking. But I like to think I do an okay job and I think that's why I have a good relationship with most of the brands that I have in my collection. It is always going to blow my mind that I have this wonderful career and ability to do this and receive these products, but I'm kind of like in that middle level where I'm trying to convert these brand relationships into paying relationships so that I can keep doing this and keep this afloat. Um, 
But PR is a big help because you get those products early, you can try them early, and just share your opinions with the new stuff on the market, which is very, very valuable. Now this was simply one of my favorite Jouer products that I've ever had, and this was their Blush Bouquet Palette. Their blush is so good. I love their blush duos, and I saved most of them from decluttering. I think I got rid of one of them. I'm going to take a couple shades out of here, mix them together. I want a little color, because I feel like I have a lot of bleh, like, and I need to add a pop of color, and the only way I'm doing that is with my blush today. So I'm gonna dip into Kiss Me and Know Me, both beautiful pinks, one medium and one light. And I like to apply blush to like the front portion of my cheek, right underneath my eye. Like if you go directly underneath the eye, that's where I've been applying it lately. It totally depends on your face shape. Mine is like big, <laughs> so that's where I put my blush. So for a highlighter today, I'm going to be using the Persona Cosmetics Zuma Highlighter. I think I bought this myself, but they did send me products at one point and they don't anymore. So I figured I could use this today. This is a really pretty kind of gold highlighter. And I'm just going to slap this on. I've got a summer face and a winter eye. That's the path we chose today. Okay, so the nude I like from NYX is the NYX Lingerie Push-Up Lipstick in the shade Lace Detail. I have two of these. I have one in my makeup collection and one in my purse. That's how much I love these. Now, these are like stick lipstick. They're not liquid lipstick, but they will last all day. And I like how they're super thin, so you can use them as a liner first and then fill in your lips. So this is the lipstick of choice today. I think the eye look is too intense for me to do a deep lip and feel good about it. So let's do it. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Priming Water. And I used this, I used the Nicole Concilio ones for a really long time. I like it a lot as a setting spray. I don't use it as a primer too often, um, but it is really, really good at bringing down a cakey look. It brings out your highlight. It blends everything together. So this is the look I came up with with all of the makeup brands that have kicked me off PR. Um, I'm sure there are more, but this is like my favorite makeup from the brands that have kicked me off PR. <laughs> so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up for me. If you like the concept of this video or Full Face Friday, then make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And hopefully I will continue doing these very regularly for you guys. I do post weekly over here on this channel so if you guys don't see me in your subscription feed then make sure to come back and search for me because unfortunately that's how the algorithm is playing us recently but that is all for today's video and hopefully I will see you guys all in my next one bye guys